welcome to today's First Impression Friday. Uh, we are going to be taking a look at Vogue's Summer 2021 Pattern Collection. Um, we've been talking a lot lately about the sort of rebranding and sort of the direction that all of the pattern companies, or at least the big four or five, whatever it is now, um, are taking. And so hopefully Vogue settles in nicely with that sort of high-end, luxury, high-tailored, or well-tailored um, sort of set that we fell in love with them for, right? Um, okay, so first we have this Mrs. and Mrs. Petite jumpsuit. And I think when something is a Mrs. Petite, there are going to be um, instructions on the patterns for where to lengthen and shorten, well, mostly shorten for petite, I think. We'll look at the size chart and see if it gives us any additional information, but um, for I think that's what the petite is going to mean. This says, uh, Mrs. and Mrs. Petite jumpsuit, close fitting through bust, has front princess seams, wide legs with no side seams, invisible back zipper, separate pieces are included for your different cup sizes. So, incredibly flattering. Um, easier to fit. <laughs> um, you can see here on the models version, pretty spot on fit. I don't think though that it's supposed to be a drop waist. I think her natural waist is way up here, as you can tell by the little crook in her body. Um, again, we'll dive into this a little bit deeper, but I don't know if this is meant to be a drop waist situation. But other than the length here, this beautiful jewel neckline, the arm side looks spectacular. Really, really pretty fit in the back as well. It's a Julio Cesar pattern. And from the line drawings, it looks like it is supposed to fit at the natural waist. So I would just check that length um, on your pattern. And then look at this little interesting bit. It looks like there are little like an underlining or a lining with just shorts so if you made it out of a lace let's go back and see if we can get a closer look at the sheerness yeah you can totally see that it's only lined through like the mid thigh and then it's completely open below that i wish they would have used a fabric that highlighted that a little bit better better like some kind of mesh or some kind of i don't know just sheer something I mean, lace is great, but I wouldn't have noticed that if I didn't see the little dashed lines here. Um, okay, let's look at the fabric. So single edge scallop laced, goopier lace, which is the one that has like the cording running through it. It's a pretty like heavyweight lace um, or embroidered border prints. They didn't recommend any like shears. That's so interesting to me. You also have an underlining for the bodice, which they've done in crepe or charmeuse. And then the lining for the pants is a kind of like, I don't know if it's an ITY knit, some kind of like lightweight, stretchy, probably like silky polyester knit. Um, you'll need an invisible zipper for the back and then double fold bias tape, I think probably for the arm size and the neckline. But you know, that's interesting because it is fully lined. So I actually don't think it's for those things. Maybe something in the waistband or the hem. Maybe the hem. Maybe that's where it is, the hem. Um, sizes are 8 to 16 and then 16 to 24. So we've been talking a lot about sizing as well. It looks like Vogue is sticking with the overlapping sizes, which I actually really, really like. And they go from 8 to 24. So we have finished garment measurements just for the width of the leg, which is not helpful. But fabric requirements are anywhere from 3 to 4, basically, 3, 3.5. And, um, and then here is your lining requirements. So, yeah, I mean, you're going to spend a lot of money on whatever kind of lace or whatever you pick out, which is why maybe a mesh might be a more affordable way to go. And, um, you would uh, like get a better vision of that kind of interesting leg lining detail. It's cute. Next up we have Mrs. and Mrs. Petite jumpsuits. 
Uh, loose fitting halter neck jumpsuit has tie neckline, elastic back, side seam pockets, and length variations. All right, another jumpsuit. Okay. Jumpsuits are popular. I'm totally in a jumpsuit state of mind. Um, it's like the, the comfort of a pant or short, but like the easy breezy of a dress, which I love. Um, this one appears to have a center front seam that opens up into this like keyhole that I'm pretty sure you just tie this any old way you want. Um, here's the shorter version. This, I would be interested to see the construction on this, how that's finished off. A, to make sure that it fits as well as hers does, but B, to make sure that it doesn't, you know, slide on off. <laughs> like, is there some kind of, like, like elastic or something there that helps keep it close to the body. There appears to be some here, but I just don't know. I don't, I mean, certainly I, the fuller busted gals that are watching are just shaking their heads like, nope, not for me. Um, but is there some kind of like, you know how they have that stuff in like strapless dresses? I don't know what it is. It's, it's some kind of elastic, but it like kind of sticks to your skin a little bit. Is that in there? The back is pretty. The way it drops into this little scoop, that's really pretty. I just don't know about the front design. Let's see if the line drawings provide us with anything else. No, not really. Not really. And obviously these are going to be floppy pockets. Very 70s when you look at it like this, right? Okay, yardage. Rayon Chalet crepe and linen blends. And you need uh, half a yard of 3 8 inch elastic. Yeah, so it looks to me like this is just, like you have the elastic in the back, which I get that kind of holds it towards your back. And then this is being pulled tight based on how you tie this. And that's really it. Um, this is a no bra situation. I'm pretty sure it's completely unlined. Yep, totally unlined. So, I mean, it is not for, certainly not for everyone. Um, it is not the most uh, conservative <laughs> situation. Um, you'd have to be pretty firm and perky. <laughs> or just comfortable enough with yourself just to let them out, you know? All right, so... Uh, alphanumeric sizing on this. So we have one X, one, wait, what does that say? Just extra small. Okay. Extra small to two XL and fabric requirements for fashion fabric is not that much. And then again, there's a lot of skin showing. So that kind of makes sense. This is for the shorts version and this is for the pants version. Maybe if I were like going on a vacation or something, maybe even then, I don't know. I might try, I would probably try and rig a way to do like a, some kind of lining on the front uh, with cups in it. And that would be fine for me. Like I don't require a lot, um, but it would still be a little bit of work to figure that out. Okay, we've got Mrs. Dresses. Very loose fitting, bias cut dress, has split front neck with gathers, shape stand collar, raglan sleeves, button cuffs, high side slits, side seam pockets, and stitched hems. Whew, there is a lot going on here. Okay, so like they said, we have this stitched uh, split hem. You have this little stand collar. You have your raglan sleeve. You can see that seam line here. Um, just in general, a very, very blousey situation. You've got your banded cuff, you've got your pockets. Um, this is interesting. Is that a seam? It's got to be a center front seam for sure because the way the fabric is uh, making that V. But I think it's just folding over in an interesting way. There's not a godet there or anything. But then you also have this little slit here on the side that I think goes up to about her knee maybe. I mean, bias cut, I talk about it all the time. Yes, it's a fabric hog, but in these like silky fabrics, it just creates such a beautiful shape. The way that it just like 
skims the body is so, so beautiful. So yeah, I think they did their best to kind of make this young and fresh. I, I don't really know. Oh, I just having a, I think neither of these fabrics are great. I mean, I get why they picked the stripe to, you know, actually, yeah, it, it does have a center front seam. It has to. Um, anyways, I get why they picked the stripe to highlight that it's bias cut to highlight that there's a center front seam. Um, I just think it's a, probably a little bit overwhelming, this particular stripe. And this lime situation is certainly better. The hemline helps make it feel like a little bit more youthful and fresh. But otherwise, it's just like a really flattering <laughs> caftan kind of thing. The sleeve, I think, is what is throwing me off the most. Yeah, I mean, look at that. It looks like a, a choir gown, right? The the bottom one, few B, looks like what people wear in the choir. Um, so yeah, it, that's going to be a tough one to find the right fabric for and to make it feel. Uh, I don't know. It's the, it make the sleeve seem not that gigantic. I don't know. I don't know. I I get it. Like I understand the volume, but. Maybe just because you can doesn't mean you should. Maybe that's the rule that should be applied here. All right, they are um, going for linen, poplin, seersucker, chalet. Really surprised to see poplin and seersucker in here. Those are pretty stable fabrics. Um, apparently, portion of this or more is lined. Half a, oh, just for the pockets. Okay. And then some fusible interfacing. And then you need two buttons. I think that the buttons are for the um, sleeve bands. And then up to three and a half for the short version and four and a half for the long version, which totally makes sense. Like I said, bias cut is a fabric hog, um, but it is really, really pretty and it just feels good, feels luxurious. All right, now we've got this Mrs. Dress uh, loose fitting pullover dress has collar extending into ties in the back, slit opening at the neck, side seam pockets, purchase bias facings. Bias facings purchased? Is that, is that bias tape? Hemline ruffle. Okay, so here's a really interesting side view with your little side seam floppy pocket there's a little short version let me see the back let me see the back okay well it's not as dramatic as I thought it was going to be it's a really cute little dress it's uh yeah, it's cute. I don't know where I would wear this. Uh, I, I keep thinking to myself, if it were 2019 and I were looking at this, you know, pre even the idea that a worldwide pandemic would come and make us all completely like just turn our lives upside down. Would I have liked this then? I think so. I think I would have. But I think that my lifestyle has changed so much. Again, this feels very special occasion to me, both of them, the short one and the long one. So maybe when I start doing more of those things again, this would be more enticing. But for now, I think I would make it and maybe wear it on a date, but then it would just hang in my closet. So there's that. That That is like internally what I'm conflicted about in terms of what I'm making um, these days. But here's a good look at the line drawings. You can see that the the um, necktie is kind of like a bit of a cowl-ish or like a, it's kind of drapey in the front, which is interesting. Um, but then you tie it in the back and then it has a little keyhole that um, buttons closed so that you can get in and out of it really easily. I think that if you were to leave the tie off, um, and just finish this neckline regular, that obviously would casual, casual it up, <laughs> cash it up some. 
um, that might make it more wearable. Or if you made it, made the tie out of a different fabric than the main body, like if this were a solid color, I don't know, poplin or whatever, and then this were in some kind of like, well, silky would make it feel really dressy, like a holiday situation. But like, I don't know, like a, some kind of sheer, some kind of like, crepe or I don't know something something more casual um if you did like oh I'm really going outside the box with this suggestion but if you did like chambray and then like lace <laughs> I don't know I'm trying to think of a way to just make it casual with the tie yeah I don't think a print is going to help. I don't think that it's like the drape of the fabric. I just think that, yeah, that neckband, that necktie really does elevate it a bunch. All right, linen blends, crepe, poplin, seersucker. Again, they're really pushing some seersucker. I guess anytime it's summer, a summer collection, they're like, we must put seersucker on the list. Um, single fold bias tape and then a hook and eye. And... Oh, alphanumeric sizing. Yeah, I mean, it's not super fitted really anywhere. I mean, even the bust is pretty loose fitting. So I think maybe the neck is the only thing that's would be considered fitted. Um, but two and a half yards for the short version, almost, well, a little over four and a half for the ruffled version. So we have that. Maybe you could do like the tie and the ruffle both out of some kind of like sheer fabric. Um, maybe like a charmeuse or, you know what I mean? Something, but I don't know. Maybe that feels really dressy too. Maybe it's just meant to be a dressy dress and that's okay. All right. looks like we're entering into some kind of color blocking phase here. We've got a Mrs. Tunic and Pants. This is from Tom and Linda Platt. So... Anytime you see Tom and Linda, you should think interesting shapes, interesting lines. Well, the shapes aren't super interesting. The the design shapes are pretty much tunics, um, pretty much not not necessarily like loose fitting like the dress we just saw, but definitely, um, you know, not not super fitted, not super trendy the their design is that it comes in with all of these like funky shapes and color blocking always all right mrs loose fitting pullover tunic with asymmetric seaming three quarter sleeve side slits narrow hems top stitch detail semi fitted straight leg cropped pants with reverse construction hem bands which just means that like reverse it means that like Oh, I don't know how to explain it. Like, you can put your fingers into the hem. Right? It's like a turned up hem. Like a man's cuffed. Like a cuff? Oh, I'm doing a terrible job explaining that. Either way, hem bands um, where the wrong side of the fabric will show. Because you're like turning it up inside out. Which I guess is what the reverse construction means. Anyways, narrow waistband, invisible back zipper. I was fully expecting for there to be elastic in that waistband. So I'm glad to see that. Um, but yeah, you have these, like, like I said, funky shapes, asymmetry where like one sleeve is white and the other one is black. That's all very much Tom and Linda. Cool. Interesting. Um, maybe leans a little bit toward an older woman, maybe more mature woman. Maybe age doesn't have anything to do with it, but um, definitely an interesting vibe. I also want to point out for those of you that feel really kind of youthful. I mean, it looks to me like if you made this white portion out of opaque fabric, but you made the black portions out of a sheer, you wouldn't be showing anything. I can tell if this, how high this goes on her. But that could be a very interesting combination of sheer and opaque, maybe even in the same colorway. Then we've got a little pant. It has four darts in the back, which I like to see also, and has that zipper. 
All right, crepe, linen, and ponte. Yeah, lightweight ponte, summer weight ponte. Um, small lingerie snaps. Where in the world does that go? Like, why would you need any hardware for the top at all? Lingerie snaps. Oh. Uh, maybe I, I thought for a second it was going to be a shoulder bra carrier thing. I don't know about that now still. I don't know where those go. And then you need your little zipper and a hook and eye. So we've got the 8 to 16 and 16 to 24 size range again. Um... Are they calling the tunic a dress? All right, so you've got equal parts black and white fabric and then two and an eighth for, up to two and an eighth for your pants. Okay, next up, we've got this cute little number also giving me like hard mid-century vibes. Uh, Mrs. Layered dress, close fitting through bust, front and back bands, split front, over dress with stitched hems and mitered corners. Oh, so this is like an overlay. The black part is like an overlay. Oh, that's interesting. And invisible back zipper. This is Tom and Linda again. And again, I don't know what I have in my mind about these shears, but like if you did the white and opaque and black and sheer, since this is an overlay, you should be pretty well covered. Maybe it's the styling on some of these that's just completely throwing me off. I mean, that is a cute dress, and I bet when we get to the line drawings, we'll all be, like, oohing and aahing over it. I just don't know about the harsh black and white, the harsh center part. She's got a lot of makeup on. You know what I mean? Like, maybe that's what's going wrong. But I look at this now, and immediately I thought, like, cheerleader. Um... So I think that the fabric choice is paramount. I think that the colors that you choose or the prints that you choose um, would really make a difference. And then, of course, obviously, you don't have to use the contrast. You can do it all in one also. So keep that in mind. All right, crepe, ponty knit, crepe back satin. 22-inch uh, zipper for the back, 8 to 16, 16 to 24. And then... Um, the dress is a combination of this, which is almost two yards, and this, which is one and a half yards. So as much as like three and a half yards for this. But like I said, it could be really, really cute. All right, now we have this uh, in-house design. Uh, Mrs. Dress, very loose fitting at bust, has deep v-neck, bodice pleats, raised waist, side front seams, side pockets, invisible back zipper, and baby hems. Okay, now this is pretty, but this reminds me a lot of that other Vogue dress that like everybody and their brother made um, in 2019, I think, that had the super deep v I don't, I mean, I, there's no way I'm going to remember the number, but it was very, very, very popular. Um, so, I don't know. If you have that, maybe. But, but let's take a look at this one. The things that I like about this one, um, the deep V is okay. It's okay. It really does limit kind of where you can wear it. Like, I don't know that you're wearing that to church. I don't know that I would wear that to Target. Um, maybe if I just rethought it completely and changed it into like a beach cover up, that would be better. Otherwise this is like a special occasion, but, um, and it's just cause of the V like if we were to fill this in, you could wear it a lot more places. Um, but I do like the pleating detail of the bodice. I do think this sleeve is exceptional. I mean, this whole piece here is all the sleeve. Like when you look at that pattern piece, it's going to be huge. Um, and I do also like the curved raised hem, or the waist seam. Really pretty. It's a pretty dress. Um, and you can fill this in, and you can raise this, and, you know, go through all of that. But 
again, I don't know, this, like, 2021 version of me is just, like, not really into the altering. And I bet when we see the line drawings, we're going to get church vibes again. This time, the nunnery. <laughs> you know? It's Whoopi Goldberg. It's, uh... <laughs> Or like a clergyman or something. That is definitely what that looks like. It's pretty. And I'm sure the construction is so simple. Um, is this a very easy Vogue? I wouldn't be surprised if it were. It doesn't say. But it can't be difficult. Those baby hems maybe are the hardest part about it. All right. Crate back satin. Rayon twill broadcloth. So they're going with drapey fabrics but with a little bit of structure. And then alphanumeric sizing, extra small to medium, and then large to 2X. And then almost four yards for the short version and four, oh gosh, almost five for the long version. Lots of fabric. Okay, now we're going on to this little asymmetric situation. Please don't tell me that they are calling that belt like a pattern piece. Oh Lord have mercy. Okay. All right. This is a Zandra Rhodes. Zandra is known for print mixing. Obviously like all of this stripes going in different directions. That's totally, totally her vibe. Um, she usually does lots of different like layers of fabrics too. Um, so the fact that there's like kind of just one here is really surprising, but um, this is a Mrs. Dress and Belt, semi-fitted through bust, has scoop neckline, finished with contrast binding, um, bust darts, set-in sleeve with flounce, handkerchief hemline, baby hems, invisible back zipper. Okay. This bow is just, oh God, terrible. Pretty terrible. Okay, so we've got um, this scoop neckline. It's kind of wide, actually. Like her shoulder, where does her shoulder end? Well, I guess maybe this sleeve is a little bit, the shoulder width is a little bit wide, but not, not too, too much. Um, and then here's the sleeve flounce, center front seam, and then possibly the coolest part is this asymmetrical hem skirt, which I do really like. Like if we were to look at this, just from the skirt down from the waist down I would be totally into it um that that belt I can't uh, I can't look at this and with that belt and give it like a roll oh god um here you can get a way better look at the sleeve here that's interesting we couldn't see that at all from the front why with the belt Now this looks, the line drawing looks, I think y'all are probably making it to yourselves right now. Very ice capades, right? Like strap on some ice skates, give it a good spin, maybe a triple axle and you're good to go. Very um, like Disney on ice. So be cautious of that um, when you're picking your fabrics. Like typically things that are really juvenile like polka dots or colors like ice blue or you know, pink um, probably would highlight that some. But I think if you did it in a print and just please, please don't make this belt. Find another, like, little, you don't need all this and then that gigantic bow. Like, no. No. All right. Yardage. Crepe de chine, crepe back satin, linen blends, rayon chalet. Perfect. Extra small to medium and then large to extra large. Three and three eighths of a yard for the fabric. A little itty bitty bit for the neck binding, which you could do out of, this dress fabric probably out of the scraps and then not like it matters but two and a three quarters yards for a belt are you kidding me no don't waste your money on that we can do better if you want to put something around your waist there we can find something better than this this is just sad okay 
I mean, there always has to be one, right? There always has to be one where I am just like a null. Okay, so this is a Rachel Comey. So I am just feel like I'm just one designer after another. Rachel Comey makes really kind of like modern, really, they're usually pretty baggy. They're usually like very few seams. Um, but, but still, I don't know. They're like minimalist, cool, minimalist, modern, something like that. Um, so this fits in with that very well. This is a very loose fitting wide V neck midi dress with drop shoulders, narrow neck facings, short sleeves, partially seamed and gathered waist and side seam pockets. Okay. So I love that they used some kind of like tie dye denim for this. That feels very cool and comfortable. Um, I love how it looks like it's about to fall off her shoulder, but keep in mind that you're probably going to need to sew in some bra carriers, um, or be okay with it. Like intentionally wear like a bralette that matches or something and be okay with it kind of showing, but it has this, um, drop shoulder and then this sleeve, which obviously you could leave off if you wanted. This whole thing here reminds me a lot of, oh God, that indie pattern that has the same exact little feature. That one might button front, but I can't remember. Um, but it has the same like gathers into this little right angle, a little bit difficult to sew. Um, so be this does look like a simple dress to sew, but that this thing is a little bit difficult. Um, and the indie pattern, it goes all the way across too. Not that Rachel Comey sitting around looking at indie patterns, but I'm just saying like it reminds me a lot of that one. Oh, so that's that. It's cute, right? This is more me now. This is more me right now. This is something that I feel like I could dress up, I could dress down, but my range of what's dressed up and what's dressed down is much more narrow than before. Um, but I would make this in a second. I genuinely, I generally like Rachel Comey's stuff. So, um, medium weight denim, linen poplin chambray broadcloth, and then lining. Only half a yard of lining. That must be for the um, narrow facing, narrow neck facing. Um, and then one yard of one eighth inch satin ribbon, maybe. That is for the bra carriers. I can't imagine what else we'd be using that for. Um, extra small to medium and then large to extra large on the sizing up to four and a quarter yards of fabric. That feels like a lot, you guys. And then a little half yard of this, of your lining fabric. You could probably also go on places like Poshmark, um, Maybe even like a Nordstrom situation or a Nordstrom rack maybe that does like later seasons and find the exact version that Rachel Comey made. Sometimes it, it, this is it. Sometimes this is her sample that they photograph for Vogue. Sometimes they make another version, but you should be able to find this design from her if you want to see kind of more pictures, different fabrication, possibly um, things like that. That's always fun to do. Okay, now this little number here, love the color. Uh, another Rachel Comey. Can you see again how it's kind of minimalist, but interesting, cool, you know? Um, a very loose fitting lined midi length shift dress has V neckline, puffy sleeves with elastic hems, back tie closure, side seam pockets, front slit, and metallic trim at the hem. Metallic trim at the hem. Okay. Okay. So it looks like, is that a, hmm, hard to tell what's going on with the sleeve there. Um, but look at this center front slit. I love that. This trim detail is really interesting. Uh, this fabrication is really surprising. We actually have gathers in the back and this little tie that kind of keeps it up on your shoulders because the front was so wide. 
Let me see a line drawing. Yeah, okay. There are they are set in sleeves. So you could obviously omit the sleeves. I wouldn't recommend that. I actually like the sleeves, but if you get this and then like a couple years from now, sleeves are like so dated, you could remove those. Um, it is a pretty straight, I mean, I know that that's what shift dresses are, but hmm, yeah, I don't know about the shape. I mean, the shape on her, it feels like those of us that have wider hips plus this wider situation and no waist. I just worry that there would just no shape at all. There's like no figure to it whatsoever. Um, let's see. So taffeta, which might be what they use. Poplin, silk twill, hello fancy, and lining fabric. Two and a half yards of this two and a half inch metallic trim. You could also think outside the box and do like some kind of um, eyelet lace would be really pretty. It doesn't obviously have to be metallic trim. And then one and eighth yard of elastic, quarter inch elastic for the um, sleeves. So we've got eight to 16, 16 to 24, and then like a little more than three yards for uh, your fabric requirements. And then just about the same for your lining. I mean, do the sleeves need to be fully lined? I guess it helps them stay really puffy. Speaking of puffy sleeves, we have this little number. In-house design. This is a semi-fitted underlined dress with pleated puff sleeves, drop shoulders, shaped stand collar, bust darts, side seam pockets, hand sewn invisible back zipper. Well, excuse me. All right, let's take a look at this. Um, yeah, these like shiny, like polyester-y types of fabrics are not my favorite, especially for summer, especially, you know, just coming out of a pandemic. I guess they just said, you know what, like, let's just pretend it's like the regular world and eventually people will come around to buying these patterns. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but this sleeve, unlike the one we just saw, because it is a drop shoulder and then this happens, feels like those water wings, you know, those things at the pool uh, <laughs> you put on your kids. That's what it feels like to me. Um, are they called water wings or did I just make that up? They're water wings, right? Do y'all call them that? Uh, <laughs> um, the, I mean, this, this, uh, illustration looks decent. I just think in application... Maybe not so much. Maybe also because the fabric was just so crinkly. So, so, so structured, you know, which is okay for this. But I don't know. The whole point of these sleeves, though, is for it to be really bubbly. So I think that I just don't like them, like, on the bicep like that, personally. All right. Let's see what they used. Silk Fail. Silk Mikado. So I'm sorry I called it polyester. It's actually silk, but those poor little worms. Um, linen and PK. So you can do it out of like more summery fabrics. I, I can't imagine it in linen. I guess PK I probably can. I don't know. I just, I think I'm just kind of over it now. <laughs> Okay, invisible zipper, hook and eye, extra small to medium, large to 2X, uh, two and a half yards. Then you underline it. Yeah, that's just, maybe if I were to look at these again in like the fall or winter, this just feels like a lot for summer. Um, here we are with like this really massive skirt. Mrs. Flared skirt has yoke detail, faced waist, front pockets, pleat underlays, invisible back zipper, length variations. I mean, the fabric is stunning. It's just gorgeous. Um, oh, they put a little pocket on this one. I don't know, y'all. This just feels like Oh, you think that they were just like a little bit too late for prom? Where are we 
wearing that? I have literally nowhere to go in a ball gown skirt. And it's not like I just don't have anything on the books. Like, there's just nothing even being planned where I could go in this. I don't know. I don't know. Now this whole collection is starting to feel like really out of place, out of time, like untimely. Again, silk Mikado, taffeta, broadcloth, or sateen. And then three and a half yards for the short one, five yards for the long one. And some interfacing. Yeah, I just... I, this is like walking into like a boutique or a store or something and just immediately wanting to walk back out because it feels so far from anything that you'd be interested in buying. Now this next little bit looks better. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what happened here and here. And then where was the other? There was another group that felt like really, really dressy. I mean, if you're recommending Silk Mikado, <laughs> it's probably like, it should just belong in its own category. Okay, this is Today's Fit by Sandra Bitsina. She has like her own like little fitting system. She usually does like these little like pin tucks and stuff too though. Um, this is asymmetrical tunic with necktie, set in puff sleeve with stay. Puff sleeve with stay. Okay, front tuck detailing. Semi pull on capri pants with side front pockets and side vent detailing. B has a round neck. D has angular back seaming for better fit and purchased piping. Okay. So we get the top and the pants. This little like sailory tie thing. The sleeve is really cute. I think this is a knit, I'm pretty sure. Um, so. And I think that this is all cut on the bias, which is why we're getting that kind of diagonal situation. Then you get all these tucks, which are really nice. This asymmetrical hem, which is fun. Oh, okay. Wow. Um, this must be the pant that they were talking about with the piping. That's pretty. The piping detail is nice. Oh, and that little cuff too. That's cute. This is probably PK, if you guys are wondering what that's like. It has kind of like a little bit of a texture to it. Oh, uh, look at this hem. That's cute, too. So, here's A. This is the striped version. Here's B. That's the one with the tiger. So we take all this doodaddy stuff off. And then the pants... These are the white ones. Nice, deep, elastic. It's not elastic like you're thinking. It's just got elastic a little, little bit here at the top. But this like separate, really thick waistband is really nice. I like that detail a lot. The thing that they're talking about with better fit is this one here with this little diagonal situation. Um, it was really hard to see in the photos because they were black. The, the samples were black. But I do love the idea of adding this little piping trim. It would really elevate this cute little pair of capris. I don't know. I can't tell you the last time I even, like, thought about buying capris. Or, like, certainly I haven't made a cropped pant and I can't tell you how long. So this is kind of blowing my own mind. But, yeah, I would totally get this one. It's really cute. I wish that they would have used two different size models, but, you know, what can you do? I mean, if she is, like, the fit person, today's fit, you know, it should look equally as good on the lower size range as well as the top. She has her own, like, system, so which is why the sizes are A through J. Uh, I would recommend finding the back of the envelope, which I, I know, you guys, I understand. It should be on here. You should be able to see it easily. I get it, um, but this is what we've got. All right, so the tops are 35% uh, stretch knits, jersey, and ITY, and the pants are stretch wovens and ponty, and then there is some silk organza in the sleeve head to keep it keep that knit nice and puffy. Really well constructed. Um, 
it's it's not just your average little knit top. Okay, so she's recommending a roll of steamacine, two strips of silk organza, which again is for that sleep head, and then some elastic. Uh, again, that is for the like very very top of the waistband. It's only one eighth or one quarter inch wide. And then some of the piping for D if you wanted to do that. Of course, you can make your own piping. Um, just make sure that, well, she doesn't say how big the piping should be. I mean, obviously, it shouldn't be huge. So just get some, like, quarter-inch piping or something. Maybe a little bit bigger. All right, and then here are the fabric requirements. Let's see. There are some contrasting pieces, so you just have to pay attention and kind of add them up. Pants C, Pants D. There's also this contrast facing on C and D, um, which is nice because that means it's on the inside. You can't see it. You don't have to spend like a lot of money on your fashion fabric. Um, and then fusible interfacing. And then this one, we just get a length measurement. All right. Cute, Sandy. I'm going to call her Sandy like we're friends, but we've never met. Um, okay, now this is fun. This is a tunic. <clears throat> Mrs. Loose Fitting Tunic has notch collar, front placket with button and loop closure, elbow length sleeves, border print fabric for B. You have an option of doing that. This feels like, oh, maybe just like a cotton, but the border print is so interesting. So it looks like they took some other portion of the fabric. I don't know if like this was one selvage and this was another one, but that's how they were able to get all these different looking, they look like different pieces, but I mean, this is a different piece, but, um, but they're not, they're all just cut that way. So that's interesting. Here it is without the border print buttoned up. I don't know about those buttons, but you get the idea. Drop shoulder, I think little notched collar. That's real cute. Imagine that with my new little capris. I mean, they're doing theirs with full-on leggings, but beautiful fit. Yep. I see nothing wrong with this. Yeah, and the sleeve, um, the shoulder width might be a little long for some people. I mean, it is intended to fall off the shoulder some, but that might be a lot. Um, so just double check that. Cute. All right. Silk Twill, Crepe, Sateen, Linen Blends. Yeah, so they're kind of going for like... A heavier weight. I'm surprised. Well, where's our seersucker? This would have been the perfect application for a seersucker, but I guess they know that seersucker doesn't really come in border prints. Um, which is okay because the other one didn't have a border print. But yeah, I would think like any of your like cotton blends would be better. But they're really going for something a little bit heavier weight. I wonder if that's because of the uh, the collar or the placket. Mm, I don't know. Ten buttons. All sizes in one. Love that. Extra small to 2X. And then up to two yards for A. Good gracious. For B that has the border print, you need six yards to get all those pieces cut on the border print. That hardly seems worth it. You might as well make two, one from each side, and then give one away? I don't even know. But I guess it was really cute. I don't know. I don't know if I'd be able to justify that myself. Because this goes on the edge. This goes on the edge. The back goes on the edge. This goes, like, all in. Maybe if you got, like, a double border print, you could get away with three yards? I don't know. I would probably play around with that. I don't know what kind of math they're using for that calculation. Ooh, getting a little preppy here. We've got a Mrs. Simi Fitted Top has collar and collar band, which you guys now know how to sew from the sew-along that just ended. Raglan sleeves, 
cute front pocket separate pattern pieces for cup sizes this one is really nice so you've got this really pretty princess seam that opens out um, you've got your raglan that's top stitched this really fun placket and your collar I also love the length of this sleeve I feel like that is universally flattering look at it in this little like Kate Spade wannabe fabric so cute you can tell she thinks it's cute and she's like young and cool and pretty so <laughs> she thinks it's cute it must be uh, my only complaint about this is this is a little too white for this but that's just me um, I'm sure they noticed that too and we're just like screw it we got to get this thing made I think this is really cute I love how preppy it is well I don't like how they styled it like at all this blue kind of is giving me um, Pan Am uh, flight attendant stewardess vibes anybody lift up your tray tables and sit backs this is cute with the legging and the little like slide on fun 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 back is pretty center back seam you got the raglan sleeve again yeah so it's pretty much the same thing you can just either do the contrast collar or not oh are they trying to tell me that that white collar was intended to be your contrast collar okay okay sure thing <laughs> whatever you say all right It'd also be really, really cute length into a dress. So I don't feel like you have to make a tunic. Um, it would also be really cute if you like chopped it off here and added like a pleated skirt, you know, and made more of like a fit and flare. That would be really cute. Here I am earlier talking about how I don't like to make alterations, yada, yada, yada. And then like I'm inventing all these new ways to, <laughs> to make this top. I guess when... I feel like it's worth it. I'll do it. Um, Satine PK linen twill. Yeah, some of your mid-weight fabrics for this. They want it to be pretty structured. And then three buttons. Single fold bias tape. 8 to 16. 16 to 24. Um, top A that has the contrast. So you have your like one and a half yards of stripe fabric. And then half a yard ish of your contrast for the collar and the placket and then if you do it all in one you just need one and seven eighths yards so you can see how inefficient contrasts are but they do sometimes pay off oh and look finally randomly <laughs> at the very end here we get bust measurements that makes no sense no rhyme or reason but um it looks like A cup to smallest A cup to largest D cup is 37 and a half to 54 inch busts. All right, next we've got this fun little skirt. This is a Mrs. Petite skirt. This is super cool. Petite asymmetric skirt fitted through hips, sits at waist, has faced waist. I, there's got to be a better way to say that. <laughs> Fluid asymmetric hem, front and back, deep slit, invisible back zipper. Yeah, there's a lot going on with this guy. But this feels like something you could make in, like, I don't know, like a lighter weight chalet or something like that. And it'd be in paired with a tank top and it would be really casual and cool. Or you could dress it up into like some silk something or another and it would be dressy. I like the little slit thing. Now I don't like it in the back. I wish they would have closed that in. I also like this skirt without the flounce. So imagine it without this doodad and it just is like a little angular skirt that'd be cute right so we've got a shorter version and a longer version I, I genuinely would try and figure out a way to close this up the slit pockets your 
faced waist <laughs> your center back seam we've got one dart here kind of long though um i like long darts so rayon blends twill wool crepe so they're already planning for fall and then denim An invisible zipper, hook and eye, our same size thing we've had throughout, and then two-ish yards. You can probably squeeze it out of two. And then the longer version is two and three-quarter yards. I think it's really cool. Which one is shorter, though? Oh, I mean, it's shorter, but not by much. You could shorten it some more yourself. I don't really know where I'm going to wear that. I, I keep trying to make it casual in my head. I think I probably could pull it off more places than it, I initially would think. But I'm not wearing high heels everywhere. I may never wear high heels again. <laughs> Take that. Okay, now we have this little cardigan and tunic. This is a Marcy Tilton. Um, gosh, how to explain Marcy Tilton? Um, well, a, a lot of asymmetry, comfort, uh, uh, kind of classic designs, timeless. Uh, fitted cardigan has shawl collar, seven eighth sleeves, side back seams, asymmetric hemline. Tunics have narrow facings, high low hemline, lapped back seam, and contrast back patch detail. Back patch detail. I'm into that. So the cardigan is this, and then it becomes longer over here, and then this is the tunic underneath. I do like the one button. The tunic is super cute just by itself. I would a thousand percent lengthen that into a dress and wear it nonstop into the summer here. I want to see that back. Oh, this is kind of cool. Show me more of that back. Interesting. So it's got like this little like fold over seam situation and then you can put a contrast fabric there, I guess, or like paint something. Oh, I mean, what are those? Those just me must just be like panels of fabric. That's kind of cool to me. I don't know. I don't know. Does that, is it cool that I think that that's cool? <laughs> I don't know. I can't really tell. I think you could probably leave it off. But I think it's so neat. Certainly different. Let's see the line drawings. Yeah, it's just a contrast panel. So if you didn't do something that had like freaking fish on it, like, and you just did like a stripe or I don't know, just something like, like a floral and a stripe combined, you know, floral and a stripe or vice versa, something like that, that could be really cool. But I am loving the shape of this tank. I probably have some in my stash that would work, um, especially as a dress. This, uh, I could do without. But I think that these tops are so cool. Okay. 35% stretch uh, knits. Jersey, no, I'm sorry, jersey. Either cotton lycra jersey or rayon lycra jersey. Um, interesting to me that they haven't suggested, I mean, a cotton lycra jersey versus a rayon lycra jersey are like night and day. The rayon's just going to be so much drapier. Or you could do a lightweight ponty. Now, they don't say anything about, oh yes, they do. Fusible Trico Remnant. Four inches by 10 inches? Four by 10? No, that's not it. What is this fusible trico for? And where do we find this like back panel thing? They just say contrast. So I guess it's just any old fabric contrast. 
I mean, maybe they shouldn't have called it a back patch. But either way, right around two and a half, or up to two and a quarter yards, you'll need a button for the cardigan and then this fusible trico. There's that. Oh, now we're we've got like a like a bustier corset thing. They're calling a vest. I've been watching Friends from the beginning, and these little vests they wore. The girls wore them all the time in like the late '90s. Uh, petite, close-fitting, lined two-edge vest with front princess seams, button closure. B has a grow green ribbon trim. Separate pattern pieces are included for the cup sizes. I don't know that I can get behind vests right now but I do think that vests layered over things that you wouldn't expect for example if you had like an eyelet a white eyelet dress and you layered this over that I think that that is cool or like some kind of like flowy floaty situation and then this over that but this just as a top I don't know about that Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about vests. This, I feel like it needs to be a matching set. I feel like if they had paired this with some kind of like skirt or short that had the same trim detail, home run, they would sell a million of them. This by itself, eh, with white jeans, feels like the two different parties. Like, this girl's going somewhere different than this girl. I don't know. She makes it look cute. Well, probably because she's got a perfect body. Well, I'm not going to say perfect. She's got, I'm not even going to say ideal. What is the best way to explain someone just who can wear anything and look, you know, like a million bucks in it? I guess technically we can all do that. I need to... I misspoke. I take it back. Anybody can look like a million bucks no matter what their body looks like. I try and have as much body positivity as I possibly can, especially with my own body. <laughs> but, you know, every once in a while, I slip back into those old kind of ideals and, you know, the struggle is real. All right, so this one has that X back. Oh, it also has a little seam here, which helps with fitting and shaping. This is also Pico, if you guys are wondering. Or PK, sorry. Okay. Line drawings. Yeah, they're pretty much both the same. I don't know. Part of me is like, yes, try it. Try something different. It won't take that much fabric. Maybe. I don't hate it as much as you guys probably think I do. Um, I'm trying to like, again, it, it all comes down to styling. I think that my synopsis at the end of this video is going to speak a lot to that, but all right. So PK, lightweight denim, linen, fusible interfacing, and then some kind of lining that they didn't fill in. Four buttons and then grow grain ribbon for the detailed one. Same size combinations as before, just one yard. See, you don't really need that much. I bet I have a yard of scrap linen or something somewhere. Um, and then fusible interfacing, and then we get our finished bust measurements. This is a little bit more close fitting than the last one, so we've got three and a half up to 49 inch busts. All right sweet little top this is also our first illustration now, why does she have the hair is this a vintage reproduction i feel like they should say that and they don't so i don't know mrs top has round shoulder yoke with lapped seam finish shoulder pads flat shaped collar waist dart tucks back button and snap closure a has a tulip sleeve, B has long sleeve ending in cuff with slit opening. Okay, so you can see we have all those things. The collar here, the little bib situation, this is the tulip sleeve. 
Um, here are the waist darts that you can see. So very fitted underneath. Here's our illustration of the long sleeved version. That's the version the other model had on. Back buttons. Okay, circa 1947. That's kind of, I, I think I like this. I think I like that they're bringing these back. I, hmm, do I like this one in particular? It doesn't feel inherently 40s or I guess almost 50s. Which in a way is a good thing because, you know, you don't want it to feel like a costume. But on the other hand, you kind of want it to be like, yes, this is a kind of throwback design. Oh, I don't know. I'm on the fence about this one. I, I like elements of it. I love the, the, tul the tulip sleeve. I love the little Peter Pan collar. I like this, but I don't think I like the collar with this. You know? I like these little gathers. I don't know. The line drawings do make it look a lot cuter. I think maybe in just like a solid fabric, maybe even like white, um, it could be really, really sweet. Hmm. Coming here on the end, they are really, they're really, um, Tickling my fancy here at the end. All right, lightweight crepe, rayon chalet, lightweight broadcloth. So, yes, lightweight fabrics. Um, oh, I forgot about the shoulder pads, half an inch thick shoulder pads, which is really not that thick at all. Um, five buttons or seven buttons, depending on the length. and the, Or no, depending on if you have the uh, long sleeves or not. And then both of them have six sets of snaps where do those go back button and snap closure so does it alternate button snap button snap first of all like I always say about these things who is buttoning me into this I can't get to that button there and, okay, so let's say I button, you know, these three and just leave these two open. Can I even get it on that way? I might, uh, personally, I think I would probably do like a faux placket and then a side zip. Yeah, I don't know. How, would, how did people get dressed? Um... All right, extra small to medium and then large to extra large. Just under two yards of fabric for the tulip sleeve and then two and an eighth for the long sleeve. This is, this is, this has potential. This has potential. All right, our last pattern semi-fitted sailor style wide leg pants I've wanted some like these for so long high rise pleated front have waist facings what waist facings and not a faced waist you can't just switch it up on me like that <laughs> button trim and length variations all right this plaid is ridiculous I think we can all agree like it's just too specific you know like we need to be using fabrics that are like universally Ex like universally appealing. I think this is just like, well, I don't know. Um, I'm pretty sure it is linen though, so that's nice. And then, like they said, there's a sailor style situation. I yeah 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 about the types of buttons that they chose. Um, these buttons are also humongous. Um, but basically, you have like a button placket that goes to your low hip. And then they open out into this really deep pleat. You can see here how deep the pleat is. And that's what gives you your wide leg. They also have a short version. Now this is cute. I don't know about the length. If you made them shorter, that would be very marvelous, Mrs. Maisel. Um, when she goes to the, oh, not the Hamptons, not the Berkshires, but the 
Catskills. When she goes up to the Catskills, she wears a lot of little shorts like this with this big pleated detail. So it can go costumey, um, but it can also be really, really classic and chic. The back looks exceptional. The fit looks amazing. It looks really good. I mean, and for what it's worth, like this plaid is ridiculous, but the matching of the plaid and, you know, how it's, it, it's all perfection. So um, kudos to their team for putting that together. Now, here is a different woman with a different bum. And you can tell that the crotch curve is different for her. It almost looks like it's too deep. Um, so that's just the thing about pants. It's just so specific and unique to each person. Her side seam is also pulling toward the back. I don't think that was happening on this woman's. Not that I can really tell anyways because of the plaid, but I think it's pretty much along the side here. So, um, I mean, she could also be posing. I can't really tell what her feet are doing. She could also, you know, how models are. They like contort their bodies in ways to make themselves look better on camera. But either way, there's some interesting things happening with her shorts for sure. Um, when you look at them here, everything looks pretty good. Maybe a little bit of something happening here, but um, when you go to the side and the back, there's obviously something happening here. So. Yeah, and of course the line drawings are really cute. Um, if you wanted to minimize this, if you don't like that detail so much, you could just do the buttons in the same color as your pants. So white buttons with a white pant, blue buttons with a blue pant. Um, or you could do the metallic um, contrast like they did on these if you wanted them to really stand out. So you could either hide them or feature them. Okay, Twill Silk Blends Silk Crepe Lightweight Denim. Did I say silk blends? I meant linen blends. Eight buttons, one small snap, same numeric sizing, one and a half yards. Love seeing that. Two and a half yards for the pants. Love seeing that even more. Um, and then some fusible interfacing. One yard of 20 inch interfacing for the waistband and facing and all of that. All right. And that is it. That is Vogue Summer. 2021. Um, love to pull up the lookbook in the end, kind of wrap this all up. But basically, I feel like we have some good patterns here, some good designs with very, very, very sad, confusing styling. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I think that they're they're kind of stuck in terms of who their target demographic is and how to how to represent them. But I don't think this is it. Um, I don't think this is very representative of the times that we are in. I mean, toward the end, it got a lot better. But those at the front, at the beginning, um, just did not feel like anything I would be wearing at this time coming out of a pandemic you know, spending a lot of time outside because that's the safest place to be right now. Um, not doing, you know, ton of special events, certainly not with large groups, not traveling a ton. You know what I mean? Like it just feels like some of these things are really out of place. But like I said, toward the end, it did get better. Um, so there were some redeeming patterns in there. The vest, for example, this little tunic situation I really liked. Um, the shorts were good. Even the skirt, I would try and maybe figure out a way to make that work for me. Um, and then the, uh, Marcy Tilton top and the Sandra Betsina cropped pants were all really good to me. The rest of these, oh, maybe that Rachel Comey. I did like this one too, but it's not special enough. I might have something like that in my stash already, you know, or at least a silhouette similar to that. Um, the rest of this stuff just felt, 
it almost felt like they designed it last year and then just put it on the back burner and then we're like, okay, let's just throw it in here. I don't know. Um, so it's a mixed bag for me, but I would love to know what you guys think. Let me know in the comments section below. Um, but that's going to do it for me today. I will be back next week with what I certainly believe will be an indie, um, first impression Friday. We'll ha probably have several weeks of those before the big four start releasing their early fall. So, but like I said, that's going to do it for me today. Thank y'all so much for watching. I will see you very soon. Bye.